Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Deakin University match of the round for the first time in 2024. It's great to have women's footy back in the eastern suburbs. And uh, a lovely sunny day. Great to see her at uh, East Ringwood Reserve for what is also uh, Ladies' Day and also the flag unfurling of the East Ringwood 2023 Division II Premiership side. My name's John Evan. It's great to be with you. And I'm joined by uh, Trent Cullen. Trent, great to have you back. No, thanks, John. It's um, good to be here. And hasn't Melbourne turned it on today? Oh, absolutely. It's been a fantastic day. And we do have a special guest as well. We've got the coaches interview straight up. The senior coach of East Ringwood is uh, Adrian Fidelani, but he's uh, busy at ground level. So we've got uh, Pete, one of the assistant coaches, joining us. Pete, great to have you here. Thanks for having me. So describe the last day in August for you, uh, last year and the premiership win. Uh, the girls uh, fairly determined ahead of their promotion uh, this year. Uh, uh, sorry, this year. Yeah, look, uh, grand final day last year for us was a bit of a dream, really. <laughs> we got away to a really good start and and uh, really set a statement to, uh, to our opposition last year and, and finished off with a really comfortable win. And I think it underlined the entire season for us. Uh, it's a completely different year this year. We've got a new set of players. We've had some, uh, some players leave the team and we've had seven or eight new players come into the team. And we're really excited by being able to get back onto our home deck today and, and, and start a new campaign. Absolutely. Uh, it's been a very long pre-season for us and, and we're just hanging out to get to get, get a kick, to be honest. I feel like it's been a long pre-season yeah, for us been. all and we're yeah. finally back. Hey, you got a lot of, um, of juniors uh, joining you uh, this this year. One of them I can see straight off the bat. You know, you've got Chloe Woodward. But in the, the off-season and pre-season, which junior have you uh, enjoyed getting to know the most? And... Um, um, and who do you expect to have a really good year? Oh, look, well, to be honest, uh, it's been great for me to get to know all of the young ones coming through. Um, you know, you, you, you mentioned Chloe. She's been an absolute ripper the way she's attacked her pre-season. Amelia also, un unfortunately, is not able to play today. She did a knee in pre-season practice match, but her pre-season was really, really strong. Uh, yeah, some of the new girls that have come through, we've been lucky enough to, to get Piper Louie to come down and join us. She's one of our... AFLW listed players and keen to see what she can bring to the team today. She's got great skills. She's a very intuitive, smart, intelligent player and we expect her to be a, a good contributor for us. And really backing up, you know, our, our stable of, of midfields who have got the experience over the last four or five years. You've obviously spent uh, last year in the same job as assistant coach. Must be awesome to see the girls come on, their progression and, and how women's footies come on in leaps and bounds in the past couple of years. Yeah, look, it, it absolutely is. And, and the, the club's position around growing and developing the women's game has been very strong right throughout. We as a, as a wider football club take great pride in the program that we've got through juniors with the girls teams and also into the seniors and the focus that the entire club has on building this group on making sure that they have a profile and ensuring that they have the same opportunities that the men's teams do is really part of our key pillar as a, as a, as a family club. We yep. want to be able to attract young boys and young girls to the club and stay with us for 20, 30, 40 years as, as spectators and, and family members. And this girls' program is a very important part of that. Yeah, I, I follow uh, the socials and you do a good job. Whoever's in charge of that, there seems to be good continuity between the groups and you mentioned here, the here. men's and the, and, the, and the women as well. So that's really yeah. good to see. Yeah, look, it is. And I think if you just... You know, have a look out there at the Oz kickers out there this morning. There's a, a growing number of girls every time that we rock up. And uh, we want to make sure that this club is a, is a club, is a destination club for young families to come and want to be a part of. It's, we, we obviously feel community sports incredibly important for families, uh, particularly you know, young kids growing up. They need an environment where they can have a little bit of fun, develop relationships and, and, and grow belief and confidence in themselves. And, and that's the role that we want to play in helping that. I note uh, that there is uh, a new addition on this uh, team sheet, uh, Emily Robinson from Queensland. Yep. Tell us more about her and, uh, and her um, footballing ex um, experiences up in the, shun at the Sunshine State. I suppose the weather suits her today, perhaps? Well, a little bit. Um, I think if you ask Robbo, I think it needs to be 40 degrees down here and she'd still be wearing a thermal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> look, Robbo's brought a lot to the club over pre-season. She's presented early on. She's been a regular attendee at training sessions. And she's really bringing her own personality into the group. She's a, a leader out there on the field. She's yeah. very, very hard at the contest. She's got good size about her. And, um, and she's very vocal as well. So we're, we're really expecting her to, uh, to, to take a big leap today and be a real standout for us on the ground. 
So a standout addition uh, indeed. We're looking forward to seeing her and the rest of the team run around for the first time in a while in Division 1. Uh, Pete, thanks so much for joining us. We'll uh, let you go back down to the team. All the best for this morning. Yeah, thanks, guys. Pleasure. Appreciate Cheers. it, Pete. Thank Bye. you. So one of the assistant coaches there, uh, Pete Kane, with us. Trent, it's been a long time since uh, I uh, and yourself called the game out at Comby. The game's out at Comby. Uh, how have you been since then, mate? No, I've been tracking all right. Uh, cricket season didn't finish up as I'd hoped, but... What was your batting average at the end? Oh, no, personally not too bad, but um, okay. more, so, more so the team. Um, yeah, we, we're on top, heading into the Christmas break, and then somehow managed to not win a game after that, so that hurts. Uh, well, uh, there is a lot of great action to, to look forward to, uh, to today as we wait uh, to speak with uh, new Knox coach, Mark Eisenbeiss. He did coach uh, the Basin last year, so we're looking forward to having a chat with him again. But uh, around the grounds, live matches at 10.40. In the Premier Division, we've got Baronia and Vermont, South Croydon and Mount Evelyn, and the Basin up against Whitehorse. Uh, in uh, those games at 10:40, a little bit later, of course, uh, will be the uh, grand final, dis uh, grand final rematch rather between East, uh, East, Eastern Devils. Gee, you'd think I'd get that That's name right. <laughs> that is, uh, <laughs> that is indeed. And of course, South Belgrave. Now. Of course, that's a name that we've heard before in the men's uh, and obviously uh, uh, SBL Wolves, unfortunately, uh, will not be referring to, to, to them as such when it comes to the women's. So South Belgrave for them uh, this year, which is great. And right. of course, in Division 2, Churnside Park and uh, Surrey. And I believe we're, we're, we're heading out to um, uh, some Division 4 action uh, involving Churnside Park as well uh, in the men's. So um, stick around for that one. As I said, it is uh, East Ringwood uh, Ladies' Day, and also there is Twilight Footy. There's a big sign. Uh, there's a big Canards High, um, Canards Higher sign advertising Twilight Footy, and uh, I guess that's exciting for for uh, for East Ringwood, isn't it? We were talking about, um, well, certainly you uh, alluded to um, the great community uh, that the Roos have here, and I think that's going to be very special for them indeed. Yeah, no, it goes a long way. We, we saw them get off to a flyer last year in the, in the men's division, um, fell away towards the end. But, yeah, their continuity between the two groups is certainly something that holds them in pretty good stead. They had, I think their 19s played, might have played the Twilight game, was it, the other night here? Um, or potentially even their reserves. But I was out at um, Jubilee Park last night watching Heathmont, unfortunately, get rolled by... Um, Ringwood out there, apparently, which was disappointing, but apparently uh, the uh, apparently the home side was calling for a certain media team member's head, uh, allegedly. Uh, but uh, glad to see that our man Blake Tennant's all right. <laughs> he, he was there. I did. I did run into him at the bar. Funnily enough, <laughs> he was the. Uh, uh, I guess the um, the hero of controversy or something like that. Yes, anyway, hopefully we'll hear from uh, Blake Tennant later on this year when it comes to women's footy. Hey, back to this game then. The Falcons and the Roos met in the 2022 GF Decider at Combi Reserve. I believe you were there. You said it was party time for the Falcons, to quote you directly. What did you take from that game? Um, obviously, it was a, a great win uh, for the home side. Do you reckon perhaps, well, sort of home side, not really, um, I should say the winning side. What did you take from that game? If you can, if you can cast your mind back to 2022, do you remember much of that game, Trent? Jeez, you've got a better memory than I do. Um, I've called a fair few games in my time, and they all sort of seem to blur into one. So <laughs> that's um, actually fair enough. You too. might have just caught me out there. Sorry. <laughs> no. um, look, uh, I note that uh, one Haley Thompson scored four. In a, in a losing side that day. And then last year, of course, in that Premiership win um, against Surrey Park, she only scored two. Now, uh, Hayley Thompson has now gone on to Premier Division. She's going to play for the Eastern Devils this season. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there were there is one Nicola Davidson. Um, she, she did score 36 goals last year. I guess she'll need to score all the more goals this year. You're just giving all your friends a plug here, or...? <laughs> well, to is be honest, I'm, it's just a statement of fact, isn't statement it? statement of fact, there to we be go. Honest, uh, Do you rate their chances this year, the Devils? 
I think so. Think so? I think so. Yeah, the media manager's smirking at me, but we'll just let that <laughs> we'll just set that one aside. I'll tell no, you what. I think I think um, you know, going back to East Ringwood for for a moment, I think, you know, seeing Nick Davidson run around is um, is what makes this team great and it's gonna be another one of those days and it's a perfect day for it nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing Knox run out here as well. It's a bit of dew on the ground, um, obviously early morning here at East Ringwood Reserve, so we'll see how the skills are, but it'll dry out as the day unfolds, I'm sure. Indeed. Uh, it's not too bad out there either. Now, um, uh, let's go over to Knox for a, for a moment. Uh, we know that um, they're rearing to go under a under a new coach. They've got quite a few um, twin, uh, 2022 uh, Division Two Premiership players still still in the team. Uh, Dowperis, of course, the captain. Maston, Vine, just to name a few. But of course, they're joined uh, for the first time by uh, Bronte Rollins, which is which is uh, which is quite huge for them. The East Burwood star. Unfortunately, the Rams can't field a, t a team this year, but uh, that's going to be great to see her watch her out. Yeah, no, it'd be good to see. We might get word here in a second. Indeed. Well, uh, uh, well, I suppose the man uh, coaching the team we're talking about at the moment joins us. Knox Falcons coach in his debut season, Mark Eisenbeis. Welcome back to Match the Round. It's great to talk to you again. Yeah, thanks, guys. Great to see you guys again. So last time, of course, we, we spoke to you. You were coaching the base. And what were your takings from last season as a coach that you um, aim to, I guess, emulate with a new team? Yeah, so I guess when you guys interviewed me before, um, it was all about empowerment, player empowerment. Um, I'm a big believer in, you know, you get the culture right, you give them the skills to be able to do it, and you let them kind of direct the path, and I'm there as a guide. Um, and the girls have really embraced that, and they want to learn, um, and they're, they're super keen to do well this year. So, yeah, it's just right place, right time, and I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Bron Bronte Rollins do her thing. That's a huge get. Uh, at what stage in the preseason did you manage to secure her services, I suppose, after the Rams? Unfortunately, oh, look, couldn't field look. a team. Did she come running straight to you guys? Uh, no, she actually went to a few clubs. Um, oh. And, you know, she's a good enough player to, you know, try out a few new clubs. Um, mm. And she deserves that right. But um, I guess we've got the right mix and she enjoyed it and she wants to stay with us. What's the um, transition been like coming coming over to Knox? Have they welcomed you in with open arms? Knox have been fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Um, so when we burst them, obviously, last year, I saw a lot of potential in this group. Um, like I said, right place, right time. They were looking for a new coach. Um, I put my hand up and I was lucky enough to get it. So, yeah, very stoked. Good to, good to hear. What are some of the names that have sort of jumped out at you pre-season that you're looking forward to watch today? Oh, look, to be fair, um, I was kind of put on the spot last time and I said a few names and then I thought, geez, I should have said this one, I should have said that one. I should have. It's so hard. Like This group has a lot of great skills. Um, and I, I guess I just don't want to call out individuals, but I think collectively they work so well together. Um, they've unified as a group. It'll just be great to see what happens today. Caitlin Roloff Wood, uh, Woolhouse um, is, is a very intriguing uh, name that pops out to me on the, uh, the the team list. She's she's playing her first season this year, but she's also uh, been playing in the uh, the Amos and indeed the uh, Southern Footy League. Uh, What's your, uh, I guess, what's your take on, um, on on Caitlin and what she brings to the group this year? Yeah, I, she's another example. Um, she's just really helped grow the group as well. She's got plenty of footy experience, as you just um, said. Um, yeah, she's come from Upper Fentry Gully. Uh, she's had you know lots of years experience with football, so um, she just brings another strength to our team in some of our key positions. So, yeah, it's good. Well, thanks for chatting to us, uh, Mark. Uh, uh, all the best for this morning and. Uh, you could just hear um, uh, applause in the um, uh, in the background. It was because of the uh, the East Ringwood Premiership flag uh, unfurling uh, 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 for the fans out there. But yeah, back to you, Mark. Thanks so much for joining us. All the best for today. No worries. I thank thank you guys for what you do for the female forty. Thank you. Thank you Appreciate so much, it, Mark. Mark. So that was uh, new Knox coach Mark Eisenbeis with us, and uh, he's a great guy to talk to, Trent. That's for sure. That was kind words at the end there. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate that. Good luck today as well. So, uh, as I said, um, well, the majority of the applause there uh, in the Guard of Honour came from the Knox team, which, in the spirit of the game, that's great to see, Trent, and great to hear as well. Yeah, I missed that. I had my back turned at that point in time, so apologies there. We couldn't sort of get that to you. 
but we had more important things with uh, with Mark there to focus on. I suppose indeed. So we are about five minutes away from the match starting. Let's get a tip, uh, Trent. Who wins and why? Jeez, I think I'm probably leaning to, to East Ringwood at the moment. Um, Especially with the old junior warm-up that they got down yeah, there, 10 to 1. We love to see it. Yeah, they've been, they've <laughs> been loud. Fantastic. They've been energetic. They're, I think they're just raring to go. Um, we spoke to, obviously, Peter. He, was, he said they were hungry and raring to go. So, um, yeah, we can see that early for the bounce. You can see that early as well. The umpires are out in the middle with this as well. We've got great support from the uh, the EFL Umpires Association. And uh, we're almost almost ready to go here. We can see in shot just, just across from us. Meg Thompson walking across and she's gonna be one to watch uh, as well. It goes without saying, 89 matches across the uh, junior and senior career and she's played seniors at East Ringwood since 2018. So someone like her is just great to have for team morale and uh, and to build that team culture, Trent. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And they can yeah, build a culture as well as they can build a team around her as well. So um, she'll be pivotal today, I'm sure. Yes, very keen to see the well, just to see the season get underway, and it's a fantastic day here. Sun is shining right on us. And uh, our, uh, our wonderful camera operator, Megan Green, has uh, the, the sun visor out. Very excited to get underway. It's great to her, uh, have her on the the, uh, the camera as well. It looks like we're, we're set to go for ha perhaps an early start here, maybe a couple of minutes early, which is, uh, which is great to see. The ball is held aloft and we're underway here. Trent Cohen, it's all yours. So round one footy, here we are. East Ring with reserve. Bounce to the ball. And by Hayley Ferris there, the, the officiating umpire this morning here. She'll do it all again. So two rucks go at it. On the deck now, fighting for it. That was Igorov. She turns tackle up. And we'll have a third consecutive bounce in the same centre circle. As we mentioned, perfect day here. Dewy conditions underfoot, but that'll dry out as the day unfolds. Hit out one again by Egorov, trying to work in the phone box there. It's going the way of Knox. Driving ball to the hot spot. Bouncing ball was well trapped onto her teammate. Flying shot at goal, and they might have picked an opener here. Couldn't quite catch a number, but a hot start for the Falcons. Indeed it is. Hey, uh, as always in the uh women's match of the rounds we are joined by uh kate green uh on the boundary kate have you got us not yet perhaps so hopefully we'll sorry we'll gentlemen yeah that was number 21 for knox thank you so much hey um keep an eye on emily vine for us she did cop maybe some some head contact uh she was a little bit worse for wear there so she she went down and um got a bit yeah. of help from the trainers as well so we'd love to hear your thoughts on that when you can okay <laughs> So back in the middle, and the ever-experienced Division One side Knox come inside 50. Down there was Warren, one of the 20, 2022 Premiership players, picking up where they left off very well. They are, and umpire Ferris says she'll have it about, I don't know, 17 metres from goal or so. Bielo got the tap down. Davidson with the barrel of sorts, the clearing kick. Goes into no one in particular, but East Ringwood managed to get across the field. They're almost inside 50, just got to get it in there. It's a foot race here, coming to broadcast side they do. And it's a good pick up, they're inside 50 again. This is exactly the response that they need. Inside they go, many players around it. Ringwood player at ground level there, Gianetti couldn't quite get the ball. It does go out of bounds though, and we'll have a boundary ball up right in the pocket. In fact, it might be Knox footy here. Is it? So last touch rule, I think. Does the last touch rule apply? Yes, it does. The whole, the whole ground, does it? Okay. So Gills brings it back into play, trapping this one well at ground level. That was Davidson who drives them back inside 50 for a second crack. Going back with the flight there, she was pushed out. Then it'll be Roo's footy here. 
with Gebel Lamb. Of course, the Blue Ribbon medalist from last year as well. She'll be one to watch today. The pink flashy boots to go with it. We can ride this home with it. Rightly so. Parked up behind this kick to draw level. Gebel Lamb comes in. That's across the face. It never looked likely. Though still in play. They do well here. Can she find her hand? Fighting on the deck. That was the captain McNamara wrapped up quickly and we'll have another ball up. So very close to the goal place here. Bilo got the tap down. And a teammate who was then immediately tackled, holding the ball is the call. Knocks to take the free kick in the pocket. Witten gets the clearing kick. All bounds well for Brown. She just had to pick it up. Just got to get it off the ground. Many players around it. Knocks Captain Dauperus around it as well. Ball hits the deck. You get clear possession. Chasing it now is Woodward, the new player. She's one to watch too. Ball hits the deck. Did she try and get the ball out? Tossing and turning there. Zali Wagner as well for Knox, and no one can get a clear possession here. Another ball up results. Tough conditions. It'll be a slippery pill. So we're on the arc here. Hit out one by East Ringwood, although Knox have numbers at ground level. Tracking this one is Prentice. She overruns it, and East Ringwood, oh, kick forward was smothered. Does well to drive it back inside 50, and a good chest mark coming out to meet this one. This is number 16, Giannetti. Simpler assignment here, straight in front. Although 30 metres out, might be right on a distance range. Set shot kick on its way, and it looks to be all clear. So East Ringwood draw level at home. So the score then. If you have just joined us, we, we are still just waiting on the uh, the confirmation of the score. But it, as the uh, the sponsors just tick through, you probably see here on the uh, Deakin University match of the round broadcast, it is one goal all at the moment. Four minutes, tw uh, fourteen minutes and twenty six remaining on the clock. We go up in the middle once more. It's going to be a tight contest, that's for sure. They move it in, off hands from Prentice. Still in the centre of the ground. Ball hits the deck. Who can get to it? On this occasion, it was uh, Rollins, the, the new Knox player. But East Ring would come in again to open space. Who can get first to it? It's going to be East Ringwood on this occasion. Getting the ball there is Piper Louie. Tried to go to the goal place. And just the minor score there. They take the lead by one, the home side. One straight set, uh, one, one, seven. Two knocks, one straight, six, 13, and 38 to go. Trent Callan. So Knox on the outer wing side, standing underneath this one. To juggle it was Witherspoon. Wasting no time inside 50, and for good reason, standing in the hole. The captain. Might be McNamara, it is. There's a few out there with the, with the pink boots. This one not as fluoro though. So again from a similar spot for two in a minute. McNamara wearing number two on her back. Converts. And they get a nice little buffer here. East Ringwood. Do indeed. They kick away 2-1-13 to one straight six here at East Ringwood Reserve. The pouch as it's affectionately known. Just under 13 to go in the first term here. Players checking into the game for the first time and checking out as well. Umpire Ferris to, to restart things here in the centre of the pouch. Ball goes up. Taking it straight away nicely. Wotherspoon as East Ring would try and advance forward again. So far it's a Knox ball. Trying to chase it there is Egorov. Players circle and the umpire has found a holding free kick. Off hands, Harris, high ball to the top of the paint. They're 
almost took the mark. Off hands, Kevil Lamb, and it's a free kick to Knox. Holding the ball. The Falcons to rebound here across the paint here. It's a good tackle. So a one-on-one -on -one contest. Good tackle there. She was wrapped up. No prior. Says Haley. So first look on broadcast side. Two rucks to go at it again. Sweeping handball there came from Vine. It's her teammate under pressure, pressure though, sorry. And there's another whistle. A lot of clouds in the sky here, Trent. The sun's probably going to come and go, I reckon. It's almost blinding us at the moment. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to put it. So on the deck again. Knox fight. East Ring would come out with it. High up and under into space. They've got the numbers here at ground level, East Ringwood. And they might just win out, although the pressure's good enough from Knox to lock it under. So we see some running repairs to the East Ringwood Ruckman there. Might just be strapping her finger up. So East Ringwood again, they emerge with the footy in hand. Bites off the 45 to centre half forward. Another two on two contest. Driving through was Knox, and they do it well through the corridor. Although well, cut off there in the middle by East Ringwood, and they fan it wide again to more numbers. Gebel Lamb, kick smothered. Still a chance for East Ringwood. Harris did what she did last time, albeit the ball was at ground level. Intercepted almost by Wotherspoon. She's able to pick it up, get the hands off to her teammate. Bierlo across. Now they're in the centre of the ground. Open space ahead of them. Kickers in the Gebel Lamb direction, or maybe Davidson. Umpire has paid a free kick to East Ringwood. After the marking contest, Davidson will get a look here. High ball to a contest. Almost taking the mark there was Wagner for Knox. Ball's at ground level. Knox have the numbers for the moment. They try and pick up the ball through Richie. Not quite. Umpire to call a stalemate here. We'll go up again. We might have word from Kate in a sec. Will the spoon just getting some repairs done? Okay, number 35, Ringwood, um, just taken off, um, strapping on a finger, and he's just making an assessment. It looks to be in some discuss, discomfort, sorry, right in front of us. So we'll keep an eye on that. As the ball sits on the deck here for Knox. They hack it out of there. And this might be last touch rule going the way of East Ringwood. Is indeed. So the Roos will try and bring it in. That, well, that uh, whistle doesn't really sound like uh, like an Acme Thunderer, it has to be said. Just outside the pane of 50. East Ringwood still managed to bring it in. Louis with the hands off in the uh, direction of Eastham. Just in the pocket. And umpire to pull things up, maybe bring it in just a little bit. was just that. Vine was tackled. She looks to be okay after maybe a little bit of contact with the face. East Ringwood trying to clear it out through Harris. All to no avail. Boundary. Now outside. Let's go down to Kate. Um, Vine was um, cleared by their um, sports trainer to continue. Um, it was more just a bit of a stun. With number 35 for East Ringwood, she's actually dislocated um, her little finger despite being strapped. So oh they're in discussion at the moment as to... Um, well, trainers are recommending um, further appropriate management at this point in time. Thanks, Kate. Appreciate your work down in front of us there. The ball hasn't moved from its spot on the half forward flank there. There's another whistle in front of all the signage board there. So Knox this time with the hit out. It's a big loss for East Ringwood if she's if her day's done. Massive loss. She's a tall figure for East Ringwood there. They're missing her dearly in the ruck at the moment as they can't quite work this one into space. Fighting again on her hands and knees. Both sides there. 
So it'll be tossed up again. Just repeating the score. East Ringwood 2 1 13 playing Knox one straight as they might get another opportunity to hit the scoreboard here. Driving ball forward. That was Prentice. Foot race is on now inside 50. And defending well there with a ruse to wrap her up. Would have been costly if that snuck out the back and they're calling for another to play it down here. Looks to be A-OK. -okay. Just good news for all involved. Indeed. We can restart things here. Knox get first hands to it. Warren getting involved there for the Phelps. Holding the ball is the call. And uh, Warren's going to get the ball here. She kicks inside. Prentice copped a bit of high contact. Did the umpire see it that way? She did indeed. So the Knox number one will have it on a slight angle. Can try and claw back the lead. Goes to the goal place. She just does it all. They kick another goal, the Falcons. And it's one point in it so far. East Ring with 13, Knox 12. That hurts if you're a fan of the Roos. They've had all the ascendancy. Ball spent majority of its time up in their half. And I think that might be Knox's second entry for two straight. So it's efficient use going forward for the Falcons. Five minutes to go as well in the first. And Mark looks to be pleased in front of the coach's box there. So back in the middle of East Ringwood Reserve again. Roos will be looking to answer as they did first time Knox scored. So just sits on the cricket pitch now. The umpire will call for it again. And say, come off the pitch, ladies. We'll do it. So getting the tap down there is Egorov. And to no avail for the moment. A lot of players circling. One of them was Warren. They get it inside 50 again. Ball was for uh, the number 31, who I'm not sure who is. It's a new number there, Kate, for Knox, number 31. Getting the tap down there, East Ringwood. Ball fell nicely. Now they've just got to find a bit of space ahead of them. It's Warren a hard ball is to 31 win. for Knox. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Cass Warren is not. So who's 19? Um, Cass uh, Warren is 19 and Jess Warren, Jess Warren is 31. Jess Warren, there you go. So fantastic, we'll write that one down. No need to worry. Nearly. It should be on the list already. Oh, sorry, it's just not on mine. <laughs> That's my bad. So we might have different team sheets here, I think. There we go. So we tick under three and a half minutes left to play out in an eventful first term here. East Ringwood Reserve. It's been hot in the kitchen early. It's just hot full stop, Trent. It is. I've had to make my way into the shade here. So another whistle. Hayley Ferris calls for it again. She had her work cut out. First 15 minutes here. We'll do it all again. So good signs here in front of us though. Witherspoon, she might just be battling through that dislocated finger. It's causing some concern at the moment. They need her back out there, the ruse. So they go forward again, setting up the wall well. Here was Richie. She can run onto this one. Pump them back further towards goal, although standing in the path is East Ringwood. Good intercept mark there. As she assesses her options forward. Boundary. Heads on the 45 and over the head, and that'll trickle out as we head down the Cape. Um, number 35 um, for um, East Ringwood. Yeah, um, sought further assistance from the uh, men's coach, uh, co uh, the men's trainers. So. Hence why she's back out in the field. Great to see. 
ball is for Knox at the moment. Deputy Vice Captain in Gibson. Got a hand pass away. And then, uh, or at least tried to, rather. So that was the result of the ball up. Below hard at ground level. Now here's a ch another chance for Knox. Gibson trying to do the same thing that she did before. Albeit she got rucked up. Playing on the tackle there was Wagner. And East Ring would clear. Bit of open space ahead so they can move. And there's lots of open spaces. An entire paddock here for uh, the team to do their thing. Nicely tackled. Nice, nice work there from Paris Gable Lamb. And at the top of the paint, the ball is thrown up. Yellow got her own ball. And uh, dispossessed there was the, uh, the number 10 in, uh, we're not sure who it is, but for East Ringwood. Of course, formerly worn by uh, Hayley Thompson. Not on this occasion, though. And by calls holding the ball. Knox ball again. Sealy gets her first look. And gets to go down the middle of the ground. So some good pressure in the last five minutes here for Knox. Can it result in a score in the last 30 seconds? We'll find out once this ball's tossed up. So the rucks again, Witherspoon fighting through that dislocated finger. East Ringwood forward to the hot spot. 20 out in front of goal, they're flying shot. It's pushed to the left-hand side there from Leah. So not quite on that occasion. In fact, it missed a lot. So Didn't register a score. So East Ringwood will come in again. Trying to clear it. They will just that. They will do just that. If not for the siren, there's one point in it. East Ringwood, 2-1-13. Knox, two straight, 12 here on Ladies' Day at the Pouch. And for the Deakin University match of the round for the first time this year, it's East Ringwood by one point. John Venn, Trent Callan with you for the second quarter very soon. Gentlemen, Emmy. Welcome back to the Deakin University match of the round for the first time this season. 2024 women's footy comes to you from the pouch in the opening game of the season. We'll cross down to Kate Green in a moment for, uh, to get some coaches' messages um, very shortly. So uh, give us a yell, Kate, when you're ready. But uh, we're not far away from the second quarter starting here at the pouch. East Ringwood, 2-1-13 leads Knox by a solitary point to straight 12 as we await the bounce of the second term 
John Ovan and Trent Cullen with you. See Kate Green in the East Ringwood camp. She's just getting uh, an update on uh, some of the players. Indeed, uh, Kay Wotherspoon, who, who copped it a bit with the dislocated finger. And uh, look, she's she's a great player for this team, Trent, and uh, it would impact them fairly badly if um, she were to play no part in this game so early in the yep. piece as well. Yeah, I think she'll um, she'll continue to just fight through. I think dislocated finger. It obviously was troubling her out there. I was keeping a pretty close eye on things, um, but obviously with that, apart from the pain, it can't do much more damage to it. So whether they continue to play her in the ruck, we'll see. But um, there's a spot there for her down back or something where she can just sort of patrol things and, and set them up behind the footy. I've never actually played the game, so I haven't had a an injury of that magnitude, <laughs> albeit, so. Um, it's not, it's not pretty. So, um, as as you know, East Ringwood do have the lead, so how do they manage to, to keep it? Because they know that it is a completely different ball game here in Division One, albeit they totally deserve to be here. They've been a great team for, for so long. But how can they hold on to the lead, Trent, from here? I think um, they just need to get it into open space a bit more. We saw it open up a little bit more. Uh, sorry, in that last five minutes, the game sort of got flowing a little bit more than it did, and Knox brought the pressure when that sort of happened as well. So it might have cancelled um, cancelled that out a little bit, but their tackling pressure late um, almost resulted in a, in a score, and that would have put them in front. So it's been a bit of a bit of an even contest so far, a bit of a stalemate, so we'll see if things um, things change in the second quarter. You get to the you get the feeling it's going to be end to end all day, and I think we might be set for a frantic finish in the last five minutes of yeah. the game. You can see early. Um, Kate Green looks like she might have a message or two from the East Ringwood coaching staff. Kate, let's go down to you. What have you got for us? Okay, just from Adrian, um, he's just saying that the team's looking really good on the field. Um, focus on the ball continues. Everyone is on the contest and on the when needed. Um, they're, they're actually looking more hungry for the ball that in that quarter and that he's really in uh, appreciating their hard work by all um, supporting each other. Definitely agree with you now. I can see you making your way down to the Knox huddle and both, both teams are broken, but see if you can just get a quick thought or two from uh, the new Falcons coach and Mark Eisenbeis, if you can just get past him and just see what he reckons. Um, walking over to him, as I can Mark. see. Have we got you? Quick thoughts from Mark Eisenbeis. Quick thoughts on the quarter and moving forward. Uh, yeah, we knew it was going to be a tough contest. Uh, and they came up. We came out really rough. And perhaps we just... This ring would respond really well. Are we on? We're on. Okay, I'll say that again. Um, yeah, we started really well, and then as we know, East Ringwood would respond, and they responded really well. Uh, but girls, you know, they dug deep, and you know, there's only a point in it. So, with the amount of inside fifties, I think they had ten, and we had six. So we've been pretty efficient with the ball we're going for. This in the set. Big thanks to Mark Eisenbeis there, and uh, Kate Green for her wonderful boundary work. Off to a great start, Kate. Thanks for your work, and uh, one point in it so far. Second term, not too far away. And indeed, umpire Ferris will throw the ball up. We'll do it all again. Knock straight out of the blocks. Inside, 45 or 50. Almost fell for Thompson. She's wrapped up straight away. Umpire says, nothing doing. My ball. And, uh, well, a sign of things to come, perhaps, for the Falcons. Ball go up. Knox get the tap down on this occasion. And then off the feet there, Maston. Gibson, sorry. East Ringwood just managed to find a way out only by inches. We'll get another ball up. Once more, just outside the paint. Getting the tap down on this occasion, Egorov. And we're going for more of the same, unfortunately. So a hot ball will be won at the moment in hot weather, Trent. Yep, the arm wrestle continues on the floor here as Gebel Lamb will try and scoop this one up. She did well to find Ward, drives them to the center. The East Ring will reserve it was off hands. Knox on the deck fighting for it. And then gang tackled there. It was number 22 in Gills. Her first year 
in the red and black. She's so. been everywhere in the state of Victoria. Played for um, played for Redden in the AFL Goldfields in 2018 as well. Bit of a journey woman as Gable Lamb kicks this one off the deck. Inside 50 East Ring would go. It's a hot footy as we continue to mention. Knox will try and exit, although a rush ball. Hits one of the parked cars in the car park there over the fence and East Ringwood will bring it back into the field of play through Coronality. And no one manning the mark so she can sneak an extra metre or two to the teeth of goal and floating back well there was Wagner on the last line of defence for the Falcons. We've got a uh, score around the grounds for the first time today. Baronia and Vermont are... Um, getting their season off to a start out at Tormore and Baronia lead by seven points which is huge for them so uh, their big scalp knock on knocking off Vermont if they can manage that absolutely what a start it would be for Scott Nicholas's troops back to this game though and uh, Emily Robinson the Queenslander was trying to clear it She's going to go up in the ruck. The 234s going at it. Igorov and Robinson. Uh, the umpire seems fit to ball it up. Robinson got the tap down to Brown. But it's a very, very hard ball to clear. Another ball up inside the paint. So, set our forward, Igorov. This time with the lift and the hit out. And then somehow squirts its way back inside 50 and the waiting arms of East Ringwood player in Louis who was wrapped up. So Egarov this time down the throat of her Knox teammate. East Ringwood player Ward couldn't quite find her boot. And Ferris calls for it again. Center half forward. Egarov this time to Knox. Uh, sorry, East Ringwood. So go forward again, inch by inch. They've got the numbers here, do knocks, and then tackled without it there. No whistle and rush behind, so. Another score out of Cheong Park, South Croydon and Mount Evelyn. South Croydon, only just to the solitary behind trail Mount Evelyn, 18 points, three straight. So three straight to one behind out at South Croydon. So it, be huge for Mount Evelyn if they can get off to a ripping start as well. East Ring would try and clear. Gavel Lamb tried to miss it. Thompson tried to tackle. Now chasing the footy here is Rollins, but she sees it over the boundary line. Mark Eisenbice, the coach, very happy with that. And Ferris, umpire Ferris, to restart things here on broadcast wing, right in front of the pavilion. Kick attempt was made, smothered. Now Gregory can try and find a way in. Knox defender immediately wrapped up at the top of the paint. Is it 45 metres? I believe so. So I'll say inside 45 instead of 50. It's a hard, it's a hard uh, habit to break, it has to be said. Davidson was shoved to ground and then Coronaldi got involved to try and get the ball in. Thompson. Rives around one, gets it inside 45. Could anyone get the mark over the back here? Giannetti just had to kick it off the ground and couldn't quite. Ooh. They saw it over. So another score for East Ringwood. The first. I don't think that score, is that score correct? 2 one 13 each way. Especially when Knox are kicking no, it's up. actually not. Yeah, so 2-2-14 two, two, East Ringwood. <laughs> Knox 2-1-13. Thanks, Kate. It might even be 15 as well, East 15. Ringwood. 15. So, Knox forward they go through the corridor. Yeah, I reckon that's wrong. So, on the deck here it sits. True centre wing, out of side. They'll call for it again. So we tick under 15 minutes left here in this second term. The first game of Div 1 footy. The deck it sits again and players just dive on top of this one. Wouldn't mind just a 
whistle to call, holding the footy or something, and break this open a little bit. Yeah, you're not wrong, Trent. So another ball up for Egorov to win the hit out to no avail. Back on the deck, you can throw a blanket over 20 of them. Squirting handball out, that was thrown out almost. Here's Gebel Lamb. Just worried oh, her wow. opponent out of it. That might have been Roller Full House. Although she couldn't quite be clean at her feet. And another whistle, that was exciting stuff though. So Maston at the bottom of the deck there. It's caused umpire Ferris to ball it up. No one got the tap down on this occasion. Falcons at ground level just trying to clear it. On this occasion it was Rollins. Up goes the ball. Tap down this time by Egorov. They do have some yards ahead of them, Knox, but it's cut off by Tash Bielo. She almost found a target. Bouncing footy, Knox ball, Vine tried to find a way out. They managed to get it off to a teammate. Very close to the paint. But it's all East Ringwood at the moment. And downfield. Downfield, free kick. Has resulted off the ball just on the edge of the center square. The ruse to bring it in. Bouncing footy. Bounced over the head of the captain, McNamara. Very close to the pay to the boundary line. McNamara trying to find a way out. Surely she was held umpire. Nicola Davidson kicking to a one-on-one -on -one contest. Ball hits the deck. Still a chance for East Ringwood. Bouncing footy. It's bounced across the face. It's hit the behind post. And Knox will take the ball in bounce. That score's still wrong as well, so... I don't actually know what the score is now. The score it's, is it's 15. I'm it's 15 to 12. Guys, I'm just going to check for you because I know the coaches' boxes will have it correct. No worries, Kate. Well, if the coaches' boxes, yeah. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. So Fascinating. Knox will bring this one back inside. Broadcast. Nice kick. Standing underneath, underneath this one well there was... Egger of the Ruckman for Knox. She had two to beat and she did it well. Floating ball down the line. Couldn't quite find Prentice by hand. That was Vine and then the East Ringwood pressure's good enough to create a stoppage. So another ruck contest again. This one, nil all draw. The footy finds itself on the grass again. Good smell there, applied from Harris. Squirts out the way of Violet. The, there you go. It was originally 15 on our team sheet. We've sorted that out now and another whistle. So no sign of Willispoon yet, I think. Her day might be done, unfortunately. She's not good news if you're a fan of the blue and white. Umpire throws the ball off. Up, sorry, nearly. Landed in the chest, uh, the hands of Sealy, rather. Apologies for the rustiness of commentary. Bielo with a high up and under. Boundary. Let's go down to boundary. Uh, according to the um, gentleman that's assisting in the East Ringwood coach box, it's 14-13, uh, East Ringwood way. There we go, so 2-2-14, two, two, Knox 2-1-13. Two, Get a restart in the centre of the ground. I think it might have been Martini and uh, Sealy just hugging each other at ground level. Might be able to fix that up at half time, hopefully. Well, they ought to. So, at ground level, nice little soccer off the ground by that Knox player. Goes to a one on one contest. Witten played it and missed it. Now, Gibson at ground level. Has to try and get it out. She's not going to try and do what Sam Draper did last night. She tried to. She'd probably be pinged at this, this early stage in the game. But nevertheless, I digress. Trent Cullen. It's good. I like that, Jono. More of that, please. <laughs> Pushed off a kick there. That was Harris. Works out well to her teammate who parts the season. Davidson to the teeth of goal. And back with the flight there was Giannetti. These Ringwood girls, they love that too. So awesome connectivity inside 50 there. Two big guns working together to put another major on the board for the Roos. 
And well, they already had the lead, but that grows. That might be her second. Tears. So a good start to 2024 for Giannetti. Playing up forward for East Ringwood. I feel like we're going to have a bit of a Four Seasons type day. The jackets are coming out. Oh, well, what a start to this Saturday morning, let me tell you. And it's a fantastic... It's great to have you here. The scoreboard's still one point behind. 3-2-20 leads 2-1-13. Just over eight to go here in the second term. Oh, a massive throw there. So, Gills... ...plays it on and knocks... Come inside 45 for the first time in a while. Here's a chance for the new Falcon in Rollins. She's got her first. Gentlemen, we have a game. We do indeed. Still one point behind. Couldn't have said it better myself, Kate. So, what I'm thinking is correct. Is that right? So, Knox still one point behind. 3-2-20. The Ruse lead the Falks. Jono, at this point, I'm really not sure anymore. I don't mind the theatre of it being a draw. True. Although we've still got one more half to go. So back in the middle and appreciate your words, Kate. That's what you get on the AFL coverage. You get a boundary reporter and, and special comments. So another toss up here from Hayley Ferris, who's working overtime. Is the officiating umpire high up and under standing under these this one well was might be richie takes a good intercept she weighs up her options she'll head to a one-on-one -on -one contest it favored her intended target although doing well on the deck there was east ringwood and then a spiraling ball back in the direction of richie who doesn't break stride and runs onto this one. Oh, look out danger and danger danger indecisive there was the falcons although works out down the line in the end charging onto this one met solidly there was louis and now a holding free kick it's the umpire points the way of Knox here. so shallow entry inside 50 and a juggling mark there from prentice who wastes no time and heading to a one-on-one -on -one contest again off hands Big contest on the deck, and <laughs> that was optimistic there from Leah. It might have been. But Knox, we had Mark at quarter time as well. He mentioned their efficiency going forward, limited entries, and they oh. managed to, to keep scoring as Boundary. we might have a draw now. So looks by, like, let's go down. Sorry, Kate. I'm sorry. By our reckoning before, uh, we have a um, even score, three to twenty each. Yes, but the scoreboard doesn't necessarily reflect that. Even more so. Richie again. What about her last five minutes? Been absolutely super. Ball was in the Gibson direction. It's commentator's it's Cut off by the ruse. In, uh, ironically, a Falcon in her own right. Piper Louie does play for Darabin. Woodward sends it inside the 45. Chance there for Giannetti again. Off hands. Who can get to it? Knox ball. Knox clearance. Thompson chasing, gathering. And it's all Knox in the pressure axe at the moment. Hayley Noonan's going to see it over very close to the scoreboard. And, well, as you said, Kate, we definitely do have a game. So five minutes just under left to play out here. Big pack. The drop of this one on the deck fighting for it. It's Thompson who's wrapped up again. She took a big hit. Boundary. She released her kick just before as we head back to Kate. Um, Thompson for East Ringwood was a danger player last year and was pivotal in their grand final success. Yeah, she's stamping her class on today's game already in this first half as good mark taken there by Knox. And then an even better intercept from Davidson. So 
They're defending grimly at the moment, the Roos. You talk Woodward about, now. You talk about, you know, uh, Ferris working overtime. I reckon Davidson's working overtime as well in defence as well, which is somewhat unusual. So, Knox bringing inside 45 in the Bielo direction from a defensive point of view. They do try and clear it. Jess Warren was at ground level. Umpire will throw it up about 47 metres from home. So, ruck contest now. Good smother there from East Ringwood. That was Davidson. Whistle. It's been a Holding. whistle. And that's the second time the umpire's pointed the wrong way, so. Um, that was um, against East Ringwood for a push in the back. There you go. So, a wrong signal as well. There's Blimey. no hiding here. There's to the hot spot. There you go. Big contest at the fall, this one. The umpire calls for it this time. Being gentle on the umpires, it is the first round for the ladies. Yes, indeed. So, East Ringwood, they are, I guess, we found a new phrase, working overtime to try and clear this ball. Umpire finds his way in. Another rock, rock contest. Bielo, Davidson, Thompson puts on the afterburners, clears the ball to a one-on-one -on -one contest in the direction of Easton. All to no avail as Knox are going to bring it in. High ball. Fell for only Coronaldi. So here's a chance for the Roos to clear it. Ball at ground level. They've done really well here. Now chasing it's Paris Gebel Lamb. She can do it all herself. We've seen her do it. Now open space here for the uh, new number 10 in Violet. Can she pick it up? Oh, to the goal place. It is just a point. So East Ring would have another 3-2, 3-3, three, 21. I'm led to believe leads Knox 3-2-20. And uh, one minute and 18 seconds to go just before half time. Yep. Can Knox go end to end in that amount of time? They decide on the outer wing as Prentice dropped one and then couldn't quite rein it in at ground level. So it trickles over and last touch rule. So it'll be East Ringwood with the last gasp chance to hit the lead here, if they haven't already got it. They'll bring this one inside 50. Oh, it's sailed over the head of her intended target. Working onto this one was Woodward. Her handball was to no one in particular, and Knox recover and could try and rebound outside 50, although East Ringwood had good representation. And then another turnover. So turnover city at the moment. Warren can just milk this clock if she pleases. And red times score will kill either side here. It's been a good half of footy. This so might just do it, one would think. Inside 10 seconds. As we await the halftime break here at East Ringwood Reserve. Maybe one last chance for East Wing Ringwood if they're lucky. Off hands, Knox are going to breathe a sigh of relief as we head to the halftime break here on the Deakin University match of the round. We believe the score is 3-3-21 and Knox is 3-2-20. Back with the second half and some scores around the grounds right after this.
Welcome back to the Deakin University match of the round. Here in round one for the first time in 2024. We're back bringing you the action this time of East Ringwood and Knox. And the correct score, would you believe it, is East Ringwood 3-4-22. Leading Knox 3-1-19 at the halftime break. John Ovan and Trent Callan with you. We do have another score from the Tormor Reserve. Boundary, and I'm just going uh, to see if I can... Sorry, sorry, I'm just going to see if I can get Adrian. Adrian, just a quick word on the half word message, half time message to the girls today. Uh, well, we're really delighted with how things are going, I and mean, we've, we've, we've stepped up in, in class this year, and we're, we're really happy with our competitiveness, and our game looks like it's standing up against really good competition in Knox. So um, we like playing Knox. We, uh, we've looked forward to this game for a long time, and it's turning out to be as fun as what we thought. So half time message was keep having fun, keep doing the things we know help us win games, and um, when the whips are cracking we'll be in it thank you Ed. great to talk to adrian uh, as i was saying the uh, score from uh Tormor reserve baronia i believe lead by two points against the eagles in their premier division promotion which is just huge for them and huge for scott nicholas uh trent <laughs> no it is huge as sorry gentlemen just about to grab the the mr chatty Mark, your halftime message to the ladies. It's just to keep going. Um, I think the momentum in that second half of the second quarter, we really switched and we started to unify and we played our game. Um, so yeah, if we, if we can just keep that momentum going because it's a hard contest out there. You really happy with that second quarter? Yeah, very happy. I think we responded well. So let's see if we can keep it going. Okay, thanks Mark. Nice. Okay, um, gentlemen, just an update for you for one of the East Ringwood players. Number 35 with a spoon has been referred to medical management for her dislocated little left little finger. So it's likely that she won't play a part in the game no, for the rest she, of the No, she's actually left the ground. Okay, so she's... That's a shame. Uh, Trent Cohen to get us underway in the second half. Uh, so here we go, second half action. As we... Outer wing side is that on, is it? It is, in, it is indeed. I can hear it. Okay, there we go. So on the deck, it sits here. Just repeating those scores are correct now. I think I was right in saying 22. So on the money there as East Ringwood go forward here. Running onto this one's Knox. She can pick it up. She's in business, although consecutive fumbles just invited the ruse pressure. Back on the deck, it sits. She'll have a third or fourth crack at it here to try and find a teammate by hand. Instead, just paddles it. And then Draper like just diving on top of that one. Are you still in my are you still in my content now? <laughs> we've got new we got new listeners, so. Uh, we go. Welcome everybody uh, to uh, the <laughs> Deakin University match of the round. Anyway, Dave, Davidson gets it to the goal place. Tossing turning there, Gianetti. Very close to the teeth of goal. The umpire is going to rein it in. Nicely worked there by Woodward. Best chance here for East Ringwood. Now here's Piper Louie on the left. Smothered ball. Captain McNamara gets involved. The ball's still in. And it's now going to be in the hands of the umpire. East Ringwood's best start so far and as i say that the commentators curse strikes again or does it board ground level any players come to meet at one-on-one -on -one contest that's thompson she has to let it go at the top of the paint so a bit of confusion here with the rucks maybe as the umpire just waits for number 16 to run into this one wagner she ended up just running onto the footy and then in turn into the waiting arms of the ruse so the second go here for the ball again to be tossed up fighting on the deck again both sides it's been the narrative to, of today hasn't it Jono? Yeah, it's been a very tight contest and very hard ball to win so we go up again 
clearing kick for the Falcons. Bilo almost cut that off. Now at ground level, pressure was laid there by Witten. Umpire says ball up after players hit the deck. And we're back up again. Good chance here for Knox. Now Jess Warren got the hands off there early in the piece. It's very even at the moment. You can hear the players on the bench here. Davidson and Thompson combine across the field. And uh, very close to the cut stuff, there they go. It's nicely done. Now here's a chance for Davidson. It was a double bouncer. Can she still get the ball? This will be a goal of the day contender. No, no, no. She's gone. And that's great pressure laid there by the Falcons, but they still might be able to get a consolation prize, albeit not at the hands of Davidson. Ball is now at the top of the goal square. Has the umpire seen to pay a free kick? He has. It's going the way of the Falcons. And uh, that was a very high pressure situation there for both teams to Boundary. grapple there with as we go down to Kate Green. Um, Knox way because of holding. Yes. So there we go there as ball trickles out here. The umpire a bit uncertain will just call for this one. They do play last touch rule. So sweeping handball there came from Gibson. And now a whistle going the way of Knox. Called to play on, down the line. One-on-one contest, Prentice. Might be first back to this one, although running in for the side there was Warren. They go forward again. The Roos have set the wall up well, though. All sorts of high contact there, and Ferris is awake to it. Trent, I wouldn't normally do this, but I feel like I'm obliged. In the comments section of the uh, broadcast on Facebook, I see a Boom Boom Swabi football club watching the game from Pakistan. So it's great to have them as part of the broadcast here. Oh, wow. We're off to a flying start, aren't we? This is amazing. Obviously, big fans of women's footy. It's good to see, aren't we all? So centre-half forward here for the Roos. They've had all the momentum in this start of this second half. The umpire calls for it again. Toss the way of Wagner. Her kick forward will find Warren, who slaps it forward again. They gain about 50 through the corridor here. Shortest route to home, although East Springwood again. So they've done all day, have defended well. Dropping this one there. Was number 23 and inside 50. First back. Here is Knox. On the deck it sits. They were worried out of it. Warren, her hands were awesome to her teammate who. Miss Skews with a flying shot again. And a minor score there. Second blemish of the morning. So just inside 14 minutes to go. Here in the third term at East Ringwood. And, uh, the Roos have the field set. Defender elects to come out in the Gebel Lamb direction. It's going to be cut off now by uh, Rollins. And umpire Ferris. Will have it as a result of players hitting the deck. Nicely worked there by Egorov. Ball fell for Prentice, but she had to let it go. Maston chasing, gathering. Did she get caught high? It would seem that she did. Played for Forest Hill in the uh, Eastern Region Juniors. They come to the goal place now. Here's a chance for Knox. Was that off the boot? Umpire said no. It was a hand touch by the East Ringwood player. So, a smother on the line there. And uh, still one point in it. 22 plays 21. The home side has the lead. And they come in from defence. So Bilo with the kick out duties. Heads in the direction of Thompson. Who does well to find her hand. And then her teammate who can send them down the line. Coming out to meet this one was Woodward. She can fan it wide. She's got Gevel Lamb there. In company with number three in Noonan who's pinged for a throw. 
There's good pressure from Knox to put the clamps on there. That was Rowlands, who's been lively in the second half. He's popped this one to centre half forward and well, she had an A written all over that one. It was Leah. Superstar. Getting directions from coaching staff on the bench here. It'll take her best efforts from here. In she steps now. Measured approach. It was, journey was all right, but just offline in the end. So inch by inch, they close this gap and now we're all square. No overtime, unfortunately, as is the case with local footy. Be interesting to see what would happen in the event of that. East Ring would bring it in. It was Gebel Lamb or Thompson in the end? It was Thompson. She moves her, her mark very quickly. Goes to Gebel Lamb or no, missed her. Now here's another key cog in the operation in Davidson. She missed it too. Footy and players hit the deck. Now here's a chance for Knox. Best chance here. Ra Rollins gets the footy and then was dispossessed. Umpire said no. It's now my turn to have a possession. And he gets the ball and throws it up. We'll do it all again. This time, getting the tap down there was Gregory. She did all right. Umpire saw fit out of zone. To Ward, kick to Knox. Come back. That man says. Boundary. Go for it, Kate. Um, is it Farris, the female umpire? Um, she caught the header high. Yes, so. The right call, out, too. Out of zone. Maston kicked it in. And uh, both teams just trying to find a way out of it. Gebel Lamb was at ground level and took her opponent out. But Ferris pays a free kick to the Falcons and taking it will be Nikki Witten. They know that Bronte Rollins is a bit of a threat, well. but she doesn't get the mark. Or does she? She does. Well. Who's on Bronte? You could hear the East Ringwood players call. And she gets a super mark. In fact, that might be a Ringwood Mazda mark of the day contender. Street strolls in. Easy as you like. Makes East Ringwood pay. A solid contested mark followed by a great goal. And Rollins has her second. Boundary. Let's go down to the boundary with Kate Green. The physicality on the ground and the intensity, um, you can actually feel it on the sideline. Uh, um, the coaches' boxes are respectively um, a little bit tense, but also, um, well, uh, with Knox, a little bit more cheerful. It's a superb mark, deserved to be put through. It was no easy feat against Gebel Lamb there to beat her out. The aerial contest is Back in the middle of East Ringwood Reserve. Richie, as she's done all day. Rebounds Knox out of their defensive path. And another 4A forward coming now over the top. How does this one bounce? Through for a minor score in the end. Couldn't quite run that one down. Hudson has been one of East Ringwood's best as well. 4 4 28 plays, 3 4 22. Inside 10 of the third. We saw some, uh, a bit of dance moves from uh, the then Basin coach, Eisenbeiss. Will we, will we see those dance moves of celebration again today if Knox were to get up against the ruse? Only time will tell. He, does, he does like a bit of a dance. He does indeed. So speaking of Knox, they come in and it's going to now go the other way. Devil Lamb will, will bring it in. Back to Hudson. Sorry. Davidson, direction. She had to leave it behind. She might get it back here. Laid the tackle on really well. The second effort was there. Ferris said, nothing doing. My ball. She was lucky not to get pinged for a head high there. So this is what Davidson's really good at. Just the pressure acts around the ground, as well as kicking goals. As we said, had 36 goals last season. Trying to get the hand pass off there was Richie. And that's why... An Acme Thunder a whistle was required in this instance. If you could hear the umpire's whistle there. Knox to bring it inside. 45 again. They're the best chance. The outside of the boot bender just might go all the way there from Rollins. 
tried to follow up again. Defensive kick almost fell there for Warren. Now to the goal place they go, and it's off the boot from uh, Gibson, I think it might have been, but it's only a minor score. They kick away 4 5 29, and the home side is 3 4 22. Geez, they're peppering away, aren't they? The Premiership quarter they've become familiar with. So Hudson on her trusty left and send this one outside 50. Hands missed from East Ringwood there. Invites Knox to go to work at ground level. Fighting away was Ward. They exit over the head of Richie, who's been a stalwart for the Falcons. East Ringwood will try and run the gauntlet through the corridor. They drive it forward and they got the numbers here. Gebel Lamb, her hands were missed. She might get a second crack here. If it sits up. Put into her path now. How does this one roll? Gebel Lamb. She's got time and space. Can she find her right boot? A downfield free kick. She was shoved after that one. And it should go to where the kick landed or in fact Kate might have had a better view of that one I'm not quite sure what happened there there was a free kick off the ball going the way of Knox nonetheless I think it was because of the East Ringwood player pushing the Knox player into the goal post so but I, I couldn't catch it because there's too many people around the, the play East Ringwood to bring the ball in. Knox ball, opposite broadcast side. Stocks, high ball, fell for no one in particular. Chasing the ball is now Hudson, wrapped up. Players love it. Gentlemen, there's been a massive change in the players on the field and the players in the box in the Knox um, colours since that goal. So Rollins tried to go goalward, all to no avail as it goes out of bounds in the pocket. East Ringwood to rebound. It goes to the majority of Knox players. Egorov tried and failed as the ball hits the deck right on top of the paint. Umpire to ball it up once more. They're making a real statement, aren't they? Prentice goes straight up the chimney. Knox have good representation at the fall here. Although she was worried out of it by Ward in the end. Who's on the bottom of that pack, in fact, Beavis. So 60 out from home. The way of the ruse, they might get a chance here. Well, they wrapped up immediately, then holding the footy. So, Knox have the rub of the green at the moment. This one going the way of Robertson, who drives them to the hot spot. Clean bowls, everyone. Waiting at the back there patiently was Harris. Running onto this one, Marston. So, they continue to just pepper away here at Knox. Putting the foot to the floor at the moment. Try and stretch this lead out to eight as Hudson wins a free. And they're back half. She's working overtime, Jono. And the flags opposite broadcast side. Beavis tried to hack her way out of it. Umpire said, my ball. Woodward, off the deck. Still on the deck for the moment in front of the scoreboard. Haley Noonan, landed in her opponent's back. Up we go again. Nicely done by the Roosers. They try and clear this one, but Knox have the numbers around the contest. Standing up, waiting for it was Dowsing. Had Piper Louie at the bottom of the contest there. Thompson had to beat one. 
slap forward by Easton. Around the center circle, wrapped up as Warren. Umpire said nothing doing on the edge of the center square, opposite broadcast side. East Ringwood 22 plays Knox 30. 146 left in the third term. East Ringwood with seemingly a big job to do if they're going to try and claw back the lead here. East Ringwood ball. Thompson and a free kick will result, one would think, off the ball for Keely Hudson. Hudson, high up and under kick, almost fell for Gebel Lamb. Tackled by minus one and Coral Nally. Tackle was laid rather. Ball almost came up and was stolen by Bylet, but umpire said, after the play hits the deck, we'll do another ball up once more. They get a chance to go through their rotations here right in front of us so the hands there from Thompson found Gebel Lamb high up and under bounce was unkind for Richie there tracking this one number 10 for East Ringwood who was bumped off it there Roloff Woolhouse put it to the floor and it will work out here for Egorov who can send them back through the corridor Rollins stood underneath that one and then a smother applied from Knox they'll get another chance East Ringwood inside 50 through the legs of Richie and she turns oh, tackler. Oh, wow. How's that for pressure? Doesn't get any better. It's been knocks to a tee in this third term. Another smother. They're doing all the 1% as well at the moment. Thompson on her hands and knees. Just locks this one underneath and the umpire will call for it. It's a siren sounds on this third term. It's East Springwood 3-4-22 and Knox in the Premiership quarter 4-6-30. They extend the lead after taking it early. So we'll be back with the fourth term right after this. It's a very tight game. Hope you're enjoying the coverage, especially out in Pakistan. It has to be said, we absolutely love to see it. Support from all around, all around the world indeed. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. One more quarter to come.
Welcome back to this morning's coverage of the Deakin University women's football competition here in the AFNL. It's East Ringwood and Knox, and currently the latter is the eight-point leader. Hey, let's go down to our boundary rider, Kate Green, for some coaches' messages at three-quarter time. Okay, message from Adrian for East Ringwood ladies. Um, it still feels great out there. It's time to go. Um, they've been instructed to leave nothing out there. Um, all their stats are up in the last quarter. Um, they're going to back in their backs and they're still in it. I just um, work hard defensively, but biggest message is that East Ring ladies are still in it. Indeed. So it's interesting to note that last year in Knox's final outing in the, uh, the regular season uh, of, of last year, they were thumped by the Mark Eisenbikes coached Basin by 62 points. And uh, perhaps a lot was taken in that from uh, from Mark, now, now the coach of Knox, and he'll hope to register a win in his first game of a new team. And they're doing really well. A lot of standout players so far for the red and navy blue. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Trent. Let's get some thoughts on. Uh, on Sorry, the game gentlemen, from you. just grabbing Mark. After now. Kate. Just move a little bit closer if you can, because. Okay. Um, you've got to be feeling pretty good in that last quarter. So, what's the message to the girls going into this final quarter? Uh, we've got to dig deep and keep that one up. Um, all the stats were in our favour that quarter. They really dug deep. Um, so, yeah. Congrats to them, but we've got one more quarter to go, so let's um, you know pull together and, and get through this one. Still yeah. waiting for some okay, spectators thanks, to come Mark. off the field. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Kate, for that. Still waiting for some spectators and dogs, like we haven't seen that before in local footy. <laughs> and uh, final quarter awaits us here. Davidson and Gebel Lamb, two absolute stars of this ring East Ringwood outfit, ready to take their positions as Trent Callan gets us underway in the final two. So we turn for home here in what's been an arm wrestle here at East Wingler Reserve. Clearance from the Ruse. We would have had a stern talking to. Final break. There's a push in the back free kick will go the way of Knox. Chambers. And it is. We can send them up the ground to a one-on-one -on -one contest. Off the hands and then another whistle this time going the way of the Ruse. So I don't mind that breaking the play up. Martini can bite off a 45. She spotted something she liked in the corridor. And then fighting for it there was Coronaldi. Ball spills out the way of Knox. Still they fight on the deck. No clear winner and Rollins ends up with it. And she's done most of the day, been one of the standouts for Knox. I feel like she wanted it too. Um, it throws the ball up. Woodward tried to send it inside. Knox have the numbers around the contest. Umpire blows her whistle and awards a free kick to Knox. In the defensive paint. Ball hits the deck. Davidson just got to pick it up. She does. Tries to spin around one, two, Went to Coronaldi. And then the Sharon went over the boundary line just to the right of the scoreboard on our side of things. So Knox to bring it back inside the field of play. 18 minutes left to decide a result here. In the opening round of Div 1 action. Big strong tackle laid there on true centre wing. And Ferris wraps her chest and calls for it. Tosses it up now. Hit out was won by East Ringwood. Sharking it there was their teammate. And then Hudson forward. In fact, it might have been Louis. Thought there was a positional change on the cards there. They both got that trusty left foot. Trying to break the tackle there and spin out of trouble was Robinson. And then dropping the footy there. It was all cause of holding the footy. She was in a good spot. There was Ferris. Nothing doing the way of Knox. And it's in the right part of the ground. If you're a fan of the 
East Ringwood Footy Club. On the arc it sits and battling there was Ward. There's another whistle, we'll have a ball up. Umpire Ferris threw the ball up. Ward got the possession and then handed it off to Brown. Unfortunately though, doesn't work out. So we've got yet another ball up. Nicely worked by Egorov. It's a, it's a hard ball to win. Umpire Ferris brings it in. Louis rove the footy and then it was immediately wrapped up. We'll do it one more. So 30 out from home. The way the ruse. Again attacking the footy there was Louis. She's pushed over the line. Ferris will toss it up again. For the two racks to contest. Back. No. It's been a fascinating watch. The ball sits on the deck again there. Finding her hands was Robertson. Puts this one into space for McNamara. Flying shot to the near side. Just hit it a touch skinny. It's kind of what they needed in this stage, though. They hopefully can, can lock it in. The Roos. Feel like the game has slowed down just a bit. Knocks to clear. Gebel Lamb cuts it off. 50 from home. Options present in board. Piper Louis was ignored to a contest. Over the back, Giannetti. It's twice they've combined. Teamwork makes the dream work, as they say, Trent. There's some synergy in that, too. Double eight. So Katia Giannetti comes in and kicks truly. That's what the home side needed. And there's only one point in it now. Still anyone's game. 14.35 on the clock in the final term. Sun's peaked out, it's gone, but the conditions still are absolutely perfect. Yeah, there's no excuses out there. The the Jews lifted. Tease Ringwood can get some fresh legs on the park. Kate, if we could just go down to you briefly, would you would you agree with that sentiment? Do you reckon that the uh, the ground's dried up a fair bit? It's nicely, I um, guess, curated down there. It is. Um, the the sides are a bit soft, um, just where the the coaches' boxes are. But otherwise, um, just walking on it, it's not too bad either. Through the centre there goes Davidson. Umpire said she did enough to get her hands free. That might be the fire starter for East Ringwood to regain this lead. Knox have had it for the best part of this second half. So they go forward again. Here's Rollins. She'll try and trap this one at ground level. Roos are awake to her now. And they lock this in. You can hear the cries of Knox girls. 13 and a half minutes is a long time to milk this clock. They're going to need another score to win this, I reckon. Just good, about. Good smother applied there from Falcons midfielders. Gentlemen, in the, the photographer next to me just quietly mentioned to me that he wouldn't be surprised if it ends in a draw because they're, they're both very equal. And that's coming from the photographer next to me. That is coming from none other than Davis Harrigan, one of our great uh, EFNL media team mem uh, members and photographers. He's already, uh, well, he's given a great insight. The brave, um, he's a brave man wearing that Brisbane hat. Despite the fact he's off the field and doesn't even have a mic, he can offer great insights into the, into the season. And as you said, he is a brave man. But there is uh, a fellow Queenslander or two out in the park as well, it has to be said. So here's 
the deputy vice in Holly Gibson. Sending it in, one on one. Martini puts in the defensive effort. They clear momentarily and then knocks it back in. What can they do here? Off hands, I think Masson again, kick smothered. Thompson. By Thompson, now balls at ground level. Beavis had it in the end. Restart ends as quickly as the ball was released by the umpire there. We'll do it again. And again. Hands off. Balls hit the deck. Gabble Lamb tried. She ended up picking up the football. Trying to work it out there was Warren. Ball hits the deck. Another ball up, Trent Cullen. I've lost count. It's the fourth consecutive. They're wearing out that patch of grass there. Running through was Prentice. As East Springwood, they escape. The clutches of the Knox defense as Ward at ground level finds a hand, although Knox can run onto this one. They sweep it in the direction of Rollins. It's a good policy. You just need to put it in her vicinity. And then a holding free kick was picked out there from the umpire in best position. It would go the way of the ruse. Who again just want to slow down play. In fact, a wayward ball will trickle out. So not what the doctor ordered there from East Ringwood. It might be Knox footy. Ball up, in fact. Woodward tried in the ruck and then turned tackler. Another ball up here. It's going to be a crazy last 10 minutes. It is, especially as Nicola Davidson gathered, found a teammate successfully. Violet. It's inside 45, and a chance here. Goes begging. What does that mean? Jeez, there's a brain fade there from Knox. They had no one on the mark. It means that the scores are level. And Knox, I suppose, in one way, lucky that it's only a minor score. So Knox, this time, they'll come broadcast side. They've got the numbers here, and standing underneath this one was Egerov. Super. She had Gebel Lamb, who almost saddled it from behind. And then now to a two-on-one contest, Rollins. He's happy to lock this one away. So we're all square here. Kate said we tick under 10 minutes left to play out. Let's try to track this one now as Davidson. She overran it. And then bodies just crash in at ground level. The umpire gets ready to blow his whistle, whistle and does. So, another ball up right in front of us. This time the hit out was won by Knox. The way of Prentice. They drive forward, going off the deck there was Gibson. She couldn't quite make contact. It invites the Ruse pressure to lock that one away on true center wing. Amazing how footy works, isn't it? Knox were 14-point victors the last time they met in the grand final out at Quamby Reserve. This time it's a lot quicker, uh, closer rather. And this is the nature of this wonderful East Ringwood team. And they're inside 45 again. Gebel Lamb's got a paddock ahead of her. She goes for home to the near side. But they still hit the lead, East Ringwood. Inside eight minutes. Can they lock it in, Trent? Handy this is point. A very handy point indeed. And so it's the captain to steer the ship from behind. Dauperus finds Warren. Despite the East Ringwood numbers. And they can just move it along. Prentice missed the mark, but 
the Falcons still march on or fly on as the case may be. The Ruse, though, will bring it back towards their end. And this is the best case scenario for them. Davidson tried to burst the pack, got it off to a teammate who can then go for home. That just might do it. East Ring would get a, a goal to advance the lead. And they're in front by seven. If Knox can pick up the pace, though, there just might be a chance to quickly get it down their end. They were out the blocks early. And anything can still happen here. 6.28 on the clock. East Ringwood, 37 place. Knox, 30. Still plenty of time. What happens here? There is time, you're right. But the problem is it's now a two-score game as holding Push. free kick. The umpire might have played the wrong way again, so <laughs> some first game jitters. I was thinking maybe it would have been a Knox free kick there. Suspense is killing me, Trent. So Gebel Lamb drives them to centre half forward. Off hands, Knox at ground level will scoop this one up. Turn it over to the Ruse and then they all turn tackler to try and lock this one away. So seven points now separate these two sides. What is a big day here at East Ring Reserve. Full of round one action. Running onto this one, the Ruse did well to find their boot, although only traveled about five or so meters. Now still on the deck at center half forward. East Ring would have called for, for Nicola Davidson to come off as a rotation. She, she does now, so perhaps in the last five minutes, they just want to maybe slow things down and not necessarily get that run that she's excellent at. And maybe just lock it inside their forward 45. Umpire Ferris to restart things about 45 from, sorry, about maybe 43 or 42 from the East Ringwood. Goal. And we've got another ball up here. 4.36 on the clock. Thompson tried to burst through a pack. Coronaldi tried to get involved as well. The two premiership stars from last year. Umpire says, holding the ball. A big tackle laid there by the Ruse. And it's Robinson, the Queenslander. 46 from home. Big kick to the top of the goal square. Who can get a mark? Knox ball for now at ground level. Piper Louie was held with the ball. And a ball up to result. It's very tight here, but East Ringwood might bring this one home. It's getting dire. Home side have this one. Just about one as Thompson Ooh. runs onto this one. She, oh, she wow. broke two tackles and then just jammed it home. And so are East Ringwood. They extend their lead, and that was almost goal of the day as well. Oh, that had to be. The icing on the cake there, coming the way of Thompson. I feel like she's run up uh, Bronte Rollins, you know, with that mark. And, oh, what a moment. Big time moment. They've got a lot of runners in East Ringwood. I was saying how, you know, Davidson was pulled off, but there was no need because it that was, was Thompson, a superstar yeah. in her own right. Puts on the legs, dodges players, and gets the chocolates in the end. There she is again. Kicking forward for the Ruse. Kick found Eastham. 57 from home. Edge of the centre square paint. Ferris to ball it up once more. Should mention East. they've they've done this without Witherspoon. They lost her early. Amazing. East Ringwood 6743 plays Knox 4630. In a big as effort. East, as East Ringwood try and launch the defensive effort, they've been put under the pump in the last couple of minutes. They'll just launch it back again. 60 from home. 
Knocks Mark in defence. Maybe their chance for maybe a consolation prize of a goal late. Rollins got the hands up to Prentice. Ball hit the deck. Eastham gets involved again. She's been good at late. Along the boundary, they try and conjure up something the home side. Piper Louie on hands and knees trying to tackle her opposition player. It's successful in the eyes of the Ruse. And they're 45 from home. So two minutes left to play out. It's three scores in it though, so the Lee Matthews rule doesn't quite work on this occasion. It's the ball just bubbling away there in front of the Knox coach's box. What is that? I forget. The Lee Matthews rule? Yeah. Goal a minute. Yeah, may not may not work out in this case. They can certainly hold their head high though, Knox. For three and a half quarters, they they came to play, didn't they? They did. So as we said before, 14 points was the winning margin of Knox in the 2022 grand final. It's funny how footy works, doesn't it? Because East Ringwood are one point off. Knox has not given up though. No, they haven't. They've been absolutely fantastic. And as of you, Kate, East Ringwood with maybe one last roll of the dice. Brown collected it and then lost it. Now they're at ground level again. Umpire to ball it up. Inside the last 43 seconds as we turn for home. So hit out one there from Egorov. <laughs> Thompson again. Wow. Storming through the corridor. Merges with the footy. Heads to a two on one. The mark was taken there by Pollock. She's new in Knox colours as she fans it wide to Rollins. We can wheel and go as we tick close to the final siren here. Been starved of play right in front of us as Vine marks. She skews it down the line off the hands of her intended target who can mop up at ground level and then fires out a handball. But it's East Ringwood who run out round one winners. The Div 1 competition, they do it by 13 points in the end. 6-7-43 to Knox, 4-6-30. It's a rare opportunity for, for there to be a PA system at a ground and hear the theme song. And it is cheer, cheer, the blue and the white in the end. A fantastic win indeed from the Division 2 graduates. And onwards to victory indeed. They go and have a ripper start to the season. It doesn't get any better. A win in the first, first round. Hey, we might get down to Adrian Fitalani. Can we chuck the headset on him? Would that be all right? Yep. Hello. Adrian, thanks so much for joining us here on the Deakin University Match of the Round. Congratulations on the premiership last year. And indeed, you've got off to a red hot start here in uh, round one of 2024. Congratulations. Thanks very much. We're really delighted with that, of course. Um, we, we, we had to fight for this one more than we've had to fight for a win in a, in a little while, of course. And we're really, really, um, really pleased to see the fight within this group. It's so, it's so pleasing to see. <laughs> the new players have been fantastic for you and they've, I mean, you can say who stood out for you, but I'll tell you what, these new players are going to bring a massive new spark to this team uh, as you go into Division 1. Well, I, I, I really want to say the, the pride we've got in just in where we are right now. This club has turned over 13 players from the list last year. So, um, we, we, you know, I know that um, observers from outside will be bullish about our chances in Division 1, but this is a completely new side, as you've seen today, um, and we've managed to turn over so many players and still stay vibrant, still stay competitive, uh, and the new players we've brought in have been nothing but a bonus and a, and, a, and, and a great contribution all summer and again today. Again, amazing start to the season. Go in there and sing the song. Thanks Thank for you. joining us again. Thank you. A rare opportunity to speak to a, directly to a senior coach afterwards. Kate, is there any chance maybe you might be able to go into the rooms and just, get the team sock? Never mind. Just going to quickly get Mark. Uh, do you 
want to grab the headphones off my head. <laughs> hey, guys. Well, after that, Mark, obviously commiserations on the loss, but for 80 minutes, the team never gave up. It was a fantastic effort. Yeah, what a cracker of a game, hey? Um, seesawing both sides. Uh, we got in front and they got in front when it mattered, unfortunately. Going on to next week, what are the what are the things to improve on? What did you learn from today's game? Um, oh, well, first of all, kudos to East Ringwood. They're a great side. Um, obviously, you can see the result. Um, they're trained well. I, I think we let them have that extra player off the back of the pack way too often. Um, and ultimately, that maybe cost us a couple of forward entries. And, and they were great when they got forward and were able to... Fantastic. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, all the best for next week. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for your efforts as well, Kate, on the boundary. As you might be able to hear East Ringwood singing their song below us. A well-deserved win. And uh, just to recap the final score, of course, East Ringwood, 6-7-43, defeated Knox, 4-6-30. The first game in Division 1 for a while, East Ringwood, and they delivered with such a ripper side. Trent, thanks so much for joining me. It's great to be back with you again. Appreciate it, Jonathan. Thank you. Well, on behalf of the team here in the AFNL Media team, as well as LKL and Media, that was round one on the Deakin University match of the round. We'll see you again next week, as always, to cover a massive, massive season at Deakin University EFNL women's footy. Stay tuned for female footy focus during the week, of course. But until next time, I've been John Oven. He's been Trent Cullen. On behalf of Megan Green and Kate Green, it's bye for now. <laughs>